Greetings and welcome to a new video about a discrete time systems problem. We continue with the jury stability test and this will be our example number 5. Again we will look at our calculations step by step and verify these in MATLAB simulations. So let's look at their example number 5. In this case we start with the mapping of a Z plane to an S plane first because we have some additional info required before we move on with the actual example. So how do we map a Z plane parameter to an S plane parameter? Now the main difference between the analog and the digital or discrete time feedback control system is the effect of the sampling period T. So if T changes your stability and all the other effects can change. Now we have the sampling period that can change the nature of your response. For example your response might be overdamped in the analog domain where we don't have sampling at all or we can say that the sampling period is approaching zero but it can then change to from overdamped to underdamped and maybe from underdamped to undamped and also maybe from undamped to an unstable system can be that is actually one of the effects of the sampling period it can turn a stable analog feedback control system into an unstable digital feedback system, which is of course not what we want. This is very important. And the region of stability in the S-plane is given, as we know, by the left half-plane. So this is the safe region and the right half-plane is sort of the danger zone where the system will be unstable. The region for stability in the Z-plane will be also seen shortly in a graphical form is inside the unit circle so that's a different region so if we transform analog signal or system gs into a discrete time system gz the region of stability of the z plane can be then evaluated using this definition this is actually the mathematical expression to go from the s to the z or from the z to the s if you of course say i just substitute for z this one you go from the z to s so it's e to the power t s, which is the t, the sample period in seconds. Now, if we let this s, which is a Laplace parameter given by the sigma, which is the real value plus j omega, which is then the imaginary part, and using Euler's formula, we get the following. We can say, okay, this s can be then replaced by sigma plus j omega. T is still there in the exponent. And again, this is the mapping we can see this is really what's happening so this map this formula is actually this so we go actually from the z from the s i mean to z by this transformation by of course having the sampling period t so you can see this blue region is our safe region in the s plane and now you get in the region which is the unit circle so a circle with the, the radius of one if I now move on with this exercise, we can say, okay, the sigma can be taken out and also the j omega. So we have two exponents, e to the power sigma t and also e to the power j omega t multiplied. You can now use the Euler's formula here and keep that as it is. So e to the power j x, for example, will be then cosine x plus j sine x. So x is then uh, omega t here. So we have now this expression. Now, what is now interesting here, we can say the following. This is just a number. So, sigma is a number, t is a number, so e to the power, some number is also a number. But this is a complex expression with a real and imaginary value, which will have an amplitude, will be 1, and a phase will be determined by the argument of these two. So, it is the cosine or the sine, you will take just one of them. Which is then in given in radians, not in degrees, omega t. All right. Now, we also check the effect of this sigma. Now, if the sigma is larger than zero, that means this value is larger than zero, t is always, of course, positive, then the region C in the S-plane, which is the half of plane, you will get actually then in the S-plane in the unstable region. So, because you will now have an explosion, because it is a positive value. And you will get in the region C in the Z plane, which is outside the unit circle. Again, that is an unstable system. Now, if you are exactly zero for your sigma, this will be e to the power of one. So you will get just one. It will be then actually on this vertical line, which is the imaginary value for our imaginary axis for our S plane. That will be marginal stable if you have two complex poles, pole pairs. It will be region B. That means you are on the unit circle, 
it's again marginally stable. So you see actually in the S plane and the Z plane, different regions, but the same result. Okay. When the sigma goes to negative value, so smaller than zero, then you're in the region A, which is actually a pole which is at the left side. So if it's positive, you're on the right side. That means you're in the safe region, which is stable. So left half plane. And that means you're inside the unit circle, again, A, the region A and the Z plane inside the unit circle, again, stable. So you can see that we get the same conclusion with the different uh, uh, representation in the planes in the S plane, also in the Z plane. Okay, this is the mapping from the Z plane and to the S plane. Now, let's also check, uh, uh, briefly discuss what is the feedback system with the digital computer. Placement of the digital computer within a loop. So we have a plant, just an analog signal or a mixed signal. We have the digital computer that will be then used to multiply this or process this error. And we have this value, the output. This is the F, which is the output signal from digital computer. And that goes in this summation part, which is our reference, will be then minus this outside uh, value, so the output value. There will be an error, again, going in the digital computer, etc. So similar to, the, the uh, let's say, the analog format, but now we use a digital computer to do the processing of the error signal and also the output signal going to the plant. Now this can be then put in this form, so using AD, which is a analog digital converter, and also the digital analog converter, because the digital computer can only accept digital signals and also we need to move towards the plant which will only can only process let's say the analog signals so we go from the analog domain to the digital domain process everything in the digital domain and go from the digital to analog domain and then processes that or um, give that in signal to the plant so outside is everything still analog just inside this box is this digital so development from analog to digital block is follows. You can also see it like that. So you have a sort of a tracking data you want to track. You first uh, transform that signal or data or your information to the digital domain. Go to your digital computer or just computer here for short. You take that and then process this and go back from digital to analog and then go to the controller. And you have now the dynamics of your, for example, the missile, which is then our plan. And that goes to the acceleration, which must be then measured. Now that is of course an uh, analog signal, so that goes back. And we have now, I mean, uh, yeah, this, this, I mean digital signal, analog, analog signal, of course. That goes here, so I need to again go back from analog to digital, because I need to move in in that computer using digital signals. So I have actually two AD converters, so analog to digital, and the one di digital to analog converter in this format. So you have also this configuration that is also possible. So what it's actually saying is you shift actually this analog to digital converter uh, past this summation point and you have only one analog digital converter or you use two separately, depending on the application. Now, if you go down and then want to process this and see also some transfer function, also the mathematical operation, this sampling is sort of what's happening here in the ADC or AD converter. It's also shown here, sampling. This zero order hold is required uh, to what we have sampled also hold that value. So we sample a value, a sample a value after, say, let's say, the sample period, and you sample again, sample again, sample again, at the same specific sample rate. But you also want to keep that sample value. So this is actually what we call the hold. It can be a zero order hold, can be a first order hold, second order complicated uh, hold mechanism. So this is the most easy one. Now we have the controller then and also the plan. So this thing is all change in this format so we have now this okay what we have then in addition we can now say the sample t and also the hold this transfer function operation translates a continuous time signal into a discrete time signal so plan p which is then given by this but the sample and hold will be then this so together this plant in the S domain, also the sample and hold in the S plane, as we'll give you shortly what the transfer function is, will be now in discrete time system. And the controller, the digital control, will be then given by the G of C, but then in the Z domain. So moving on, we can see actually this. So we can also say the sample 
can be also past this summation point to the right side and that goes also to here so this this thing is actually exactly same as this only you have now only one sampling so one sample one zero order hold this together so these two parts including the plant will be then g of p which is the plant and then in terms of the z parameter okay now let's move on and also see that in different forms so we can have the digital controller again at adc and then dac so from the analog to digital converter to the digital to analog converter and we have the plan error signal given here in the s domain now this can be then written like that so we can also see this controller complete the thing all the including the computer is now shown here and this can be now also converted here so going from the S domain to the Z domain. Again, remember the plant is including the sample and the hold operation. So the sampling and also the holding operation is all here. And you have all now the digital computer, including the controller, all here. Now everything is now here in the Z domain. So you can see RS is converted to RZ, etc. Okay. Now for this problem, we would like to know the the range of the controller gain such that this system is stable. So we have a controller gain K and we would like to know how far we can go with our gain in order to have a still stable discrete time system. We have dealt in the previous examples. If the system was stable and everything was actually set so nothing could change. So we had already a correct equation and we need to only know if that system was stable or not. Now we can have a freedom that this K and that can change the situation. So we need to know how far we can go and what are the uh, minimum and the maximum value we can use in our controller game. The sampling period we use is one second in this example. So let's first look at the solution, the zero order hold, this transfer function, which is given in the S domain by this. So we can uh, give an S domain of representation of that of this zero order hold by this. So one minus e to the power minus st. Again, the t as the period of the sample with over s. Now, since the t is one second, this goes in that form, so simplified. So we have now our zero order hold. Now the plan with a sample and hold is given by this. So I just call now g is equal to the, uh, the zero order hold times the plant and including, of course, the sampling. So this all together, one over s times s plus one is our plant only this is the zero order hold together including the sampling you have this now if you can also read write this in this form so we have actually a third order system here and then one minus e to the power minus s in the numerator okay now this goes down in this form so you can now see this goes here this will be now go in here the plant with a sample and hold now i will make that the z transform of this one will give me now the gpz so it actually in the z domain so z transform of this transfer function is the z transform of that and that will be then this so you can say how did i do that that is of course some steps you can also verify this using the table in the z domain so this is something you can also verify using matlab and it's quite straightforward but i just leave out the details to shorten the video but this is really the uh, transfer function for this so we have actually two poles and one uh, zero at minus 0 0.717. It's already seen here. Now the close-up transfer function or close-up system transfer function is given by this. And the characteristic equation can be determined by one plus the K GPZ. So we need to actually set this denominator to zero. This is actually what's shown here. This LZ is actually the loop gain. So you can also skip that closed loops transfer function determination and go back directly to this. So you do actually one plus the complete loop gain. So all the blocks actually multiplied is your loop gain, which is K times the GPZ. Okay, we have now this, everything set here. So we know the GP of Z. So we have now this expression. Now, what we can do is we can now multiply the left side and the right hand side by Z squared minus 1.368z plus 0 0.368 and you will have this so we have now actually a, almost a polynomial and we now need to collect all the z squared and also the z's and all the constant terms together let's do that and we have this expression now we have a, a form which is 
the standard form for our second order polynomial. Now we can give, also give a name, so we can say dz is our uh, denominator, which is our characteristic equation, z squared plus this term times z plus these terms. So you can see in the coefficient of z, you have a k, and also in the constant term, you have a k. So this will have an effect on our stability. So let's then also check that. So moving on to the next step. Now this is the correct equation already determined. Now let's also look at the second order polynomial in general form, which is given by this. So a to z squared plus a1 z to the power 1 plus a0 z to the power 0 is 0. We have this correct equation, second order again, and we now compare the terms. So a0, a2, and a2, a1, and a0. This is the these are the coefficients. So a2 is 1. A1 is this, so 0.368k minus 1.368, and we have this for A0. Now, we will now use this for our stability test, the step one, using jury stability test. Now, we know for an end order system, we have two n minus three rows and n plus one constraints. So we have a second order system that means. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3, 1 row. So we will get 1 row. That means if you have only 1 row, you don't have to set up the jury table. So that is also that will also shorten our calculations. And we have 2 plus 1, 3 constraints. So we need to check the first conditions. First one is actually A0, absolute value of that, must be smaller than An. Now we know we have a second order system. Absolute value of A0 must be smaller than A2. What is the absolute value of this? Now we just write it down. It must be smaller than one. So that is the condition we need to meet. Now, if you write it out, you can say this goes to the right hand side. You subtract actually from the one 0 0.368 and you divide by 0 0.264. So actually two step in, in at once. And your k value must be smaller than 2.39. That's actually one condition. So we have already one information from this first condition. Now the second one is that the characteristic equation evaluated at zero z is one, so the, uh, the discrete time parameter z must be larger than zero. This means the following, you just substitute in here one and then make that larger than zero. So how is that larger than zero? So let's see, one squared plus this term times one and then a constant term. If I now go, uh, simplify this, you will get 0 0.368 times k larger than 0. That means k must be larger than 0. So again, we have another condition, k must be larger than 0. Third one is this, so this is the third condition in the step 1, minus 1 to the power n, which is our order, times the character's equation evaluated at minus 1. So we have then this thing, substituted for z minus 1, times of course, the minus 1 to the power n, which is 2, because we have a second order system. If you do that, you will get all this information. So for z minus 1 squared, etc., you will have this. If you just work that out, you will get 2.74 minus 0.104k, must be larger than 0. And that will result in this, and that will give you that your k must be smaller than 26.3. Now we have three conditions. k must be larger than 0. But k must be smaller than 2.39, but also must be smaller than 26.3. And this is, of course, a condition which is um, much more important to check because this is fine. But in order to meet all of these conditions, I need to choose for this condition. This was actually a more important uh, condition. So together, I can say stable if this k is between 0 and 2.39. If you take, for example, exactly 2.39 or a little bit larger, that will give you an unstable system. Okay, now we have this uh, information, we have done our calculation. Let's then move on and also check it in the simulation results. Now first the MATLAB code, and then also what we have from our window in the command window of MATLAB. So this is our um, MATLAB code. You've seen here the Z transform so the discrete time parameter and also the continuous time parameter. This is our plant in the S, so GPS, just to specifically mention that this is the S domain 
uh, transfer function sampling period is given now the GPZ and I convert now from the continuous to discrete time using this command which is then our continuous time transfer function this is our sampling period so sampling time and we have here the zero order hole so given as here that's also now the MATLAB will know how you convert that what kind of hold operation you will use now I have here a K of 2 just chosen to set up some uh, transfer function for the, co the closed loop transfer function but of course we can take another one I will shortly also display you the other plots now we have now also the step of TZ which is a total closed loop transfer function step response you can also determine the poles and also the root locus of that so let's then also see what we get from our command window if I run this now if I run this you will get first 1 over s plus 1 over s times s plus 1 so exactly what we had this is the discrete time uh, transfer function so as we have also determined we had of course here 0 0.717 so it's a little bit different so that's maybe due to the rounding of errors in my calculation and this was also a little bit different so close to actually what we have here so you can also see the sampling time is one second okay now this is now the total transfer function we haven't determined that but this is what we have and this is the polynomial which is interesting for our stability now going to the poles you can see now the poles are of course in this case the case two so remember the poles are inside the unit circle so we can say all poles are now inside the unit circle for this case specifically we can say the stable system of course i can check for the different values for the case one and case 1.5 etc but i will do that uh, in a plot and you can see directly if the system is stable or not so let's go to the unit step response and specifically for k and then in matlab this is what you get so yeah, it is stable but not very fantastic uh, plot you say you, you could say so it's 72 three percent actually or overshoot quite high and we have also a final value which goes to one so it can say okay the overshoot is uh, limited and also the steady state values uh, yeah it has it has a steady state value it doesn't blow up so we can also conclude that this is a stable system so this of course two so it is close to that 2.39 so we can already see quite high overshoot so it's stable because we are still in this region between in the inside in the safe region of this value of k now let's also look at 2.5 which is of course larger than that 2.39 what you get is the following so you blow up so you go that to uh, 10 to power 6 almost and after 10 1000 seconds so it goes a little bit uh, slow and then it blows up quite fast so this thing is over this more than 100 so and the response doesn't reach a steady state value unstable system because this was the region for stability again we look at the total closed loop transfer function okay now you can also look at the root locus and a unit step response together and then specifically at case 2.39 i've done that in matlab now you will get this you can see it is oscillating because exactly this result you can see also the pink dots are the poles and these are the poles which will then cause a sustained oscillation in this case you can see the oscillation up to from 0 to 200 seconds and it is an oscillation so it is kind of an analog signal which is a pure sine wave sort of the sine wave but now it is of course with a holding operation you can see the discrete uh, character now we have and also a proof that indeed this is a border between stable and unstable system now we can call this a marginally stable system and this is unit circle again this is the root logos for the left side a unit step response at the right side all right again a proof that indeed the 32.39 is a border value for the k so these are the poles okay oscillation so in this root locus plot in matlab you can also see that is indeed 100 percent overshoot here for this uh, gain so it is 2.4 of course it rounded off and the two poles are shown here so one of here one of them here another one here you can also see the other pole at uh, 1 and the other one at for specific value to 26.1 so you can see actually you reach actually uh, yeah, sort of the boundary of that unit circle so you will then go out if you make this uh, larger if you also make this gain zero but if you make that 
smaller, so negative, then this will go also go outside, so it will also get an unstable system. So the system is indeed stable for k is larger than 0, but smaller than 2.39. And again, a confirmation that this, the calculations are correct.